Today we're gonna to be trying to design and make a bottle opener from the extra bits of the 1912 train rail I have, the pre-atomic steel that I'm using to make all these axes out of. Let me show you what I'm thinking for the bottle opener here. So what I'm thinking is I want this to be sort of like a chunky, interesting shape object to have round and work as a bottle opener. It's just gonna be a cone. Okay, round. And then I'm thinking for the functional part of the bottle opener, so this would be the underside, it's gonna be a divot in here. I'm gonna use the same tool that I made for the forged bottle opener, so basically this will get driven into that. So I've got a head start on the tooling. So to make the bottom swage, I'm gonna first make another tool, which is gonna be a cone, that I'm gonna push into a solid chunk of steel to make that cavity. The only problem is I don't have any three inch round, which is what I need. So I'm bumping this up to three inch so I can then sheen it down. Now that I got done forging, I'm gonna put in the lathe here and just start machining down this taper. It's just a cone. And this in here is a big chunk of steel that I actually annealed. We're gonna take this over to the lathe now and start working on this. There's this weird thing that happens in blacksmithing where you start making a tool to make a tool, but it can get so bad sometimes. You could be like, make it a tool, make a tool, make a tool, make a tool. The last piece we made is to make this. So this is the first tool that I've made up here. This is kind of close to what the bottle opener should look like, except be forged. And then this is the actual tool we're going for. And so I've just carved this out. And then what I'm gonna do is heat this block up, and then this is gonna get squished in there up to this shoulder. And then at that point, this is what we're gonna be pushing the hot steel into to make the bottle openers. So we're gonna heat this up in the cool forge. The upsetter won't have enough power to push this in all the way, but it should set it up square, get a good start on it, and then I'll do the rest probably under the power hammer. Now the exciting part is we're gonna uh, let that cool off and see if this idea works. This is some of the 1912 train rail here. This still has the top on it. I have to cut that off because that's what I make the axes out of. The bottom's already been cut off. I was like that, that's a hatchet billet. This is our first test piece.
So I've been messing around with different lengths here trying to find the sweet spot and I actually I think I like it with less material like the this one here. Not crazy happy about how the top's coming out so I thought about that quite a bit. We're gonna modify this so that I get a flat crispy top line. I think I'm gonna like that better. It's a little bit disappointing that somebody went and welded that handle on because now I gotta cut it off. I just machined this down until I got about a half inch hole there on the bottom. And so the material hopefully will go through to the bottom and get pushed right onto the bottom die of the power hammer. What I'm gonna do is just try tapering this bar by hand to see if that's gonna shove into the swage a little better. When that's heating up, let me tell you about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Is the all-in-one platform for building a website. So it doesn't matter what you wanna build a website for, Squarespace is gonna have an awesome template for you. But if you wanna tweak a template up, no problem, you can do that with Fluid Engine, the uh, next generation of website design. Basically, drag and drop like never before. So I use Squarespace for an online store. It's where I sell all my stuff from, so hopefully, it's getting hot. Uh, you can buy the bottle opener from there, if this works out. You can connect a uh, Square Reader to your Squarespace app, so you can get a point of sale. That could be handy. If you're trying to sell stuff somewhere. Maybe. So, you don't really have an excuse for having a bad website unless you're not using Squarespace. Slide yourself over to squarespace.com slash timd and get 10% off your first purchase. Get set up with Squarespace. Now I know what you're thinking thinking, are you actually gonna forge that by hand, Tim, or are you just doing that for the ad read? I'm gonna do it by hand just for you, even though the power hammer is right there. Okay, I'm gonna try that. Hopefully that'll be enough to sink it to the bottom of the swage. I'm gonna cut it off, go into the power hammer. This is really exciting. This is the best one yet. And I'm really loving this thing. This is looking awesome. So the next step is we're gonna be working on the part that'll actually do the pulling of the bottle opener. This is the Forge bottle opener, which I made in the past, and it had this lip around it that pulled the lid off of the bottle, which worked pretty good. That system, unfortunately, it's not working on these. And so I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. And I think what I'm going to do is to go to something like this, where it has the divot. So then you just use that to pull the lid off. I was a little bit hesitant on that, but I think it's going to work out. The hesitation was for using. It would be a little bit tricky to find that spot, but I'm going to try stamping the date 1912, because that's what this is from, on here. And that would be the indication of where it is. So when you pick it up, you know how to use it, where to go. It's actually been a little bit deceptively tricky because when I put the divot in here, it has no material on the back to get a nice flat crisp edge to hook the lid. So I've been trying different things. And this is my current setup and uh, yeah. Okay, that actually worked out pretty good. 
which is very exciting. I'm going to cool this thing off and we'll see how it looks. I'm happy with the shape of how this is turned out and looking. Now what I want to do is make a jig so that I can stamp the 1912 because that's what this is from on this piece. So we're going to just essentially squish this into this block of steel here. Hey, check it out. That is pretty smoking fun to do. So this should just sit in like that. There you go. On the last step here, this is my little jig. All set up ready for stamping on the fly press, so. Okay. I just wire wheeled it. Oh, it's such a cool object. Really, it's like you just keep turning it around in your hand because there's just different things to look at it. Feels nice at like one pound, right? It's pretty heavy. I'm gonna put this uh, finish on it here and then we'll call it done. So I'm actually really stoked on how this turned out. It feels so solid in your hand at that one pound mark. Like obviously I just want an object that looked cool, but it feels cool, you know what I mean? I'm surprised how much I like that little divot on the bottom compared to the forge bottle opener where it has that ring around it all the way. Just there's a, a level of interest with that little divot. The texture on the swage is exactly what I was hoping it would be. I really like the way the 1912 stamped in deep surface. You can just feel it with your hands, right? It's really cool. So anyways, I'm curious to know what you guys think about it. I really appreciate you coming along on the development of this. If you're interested in one, link is down below to my website where you can check it out. We'll do, we'll do a small run of them if, if you want one, because uh, that would be fun to do and then we'll keep moving on to the next thing. Let's try it out, and then uh, we'll complete this project. I'm gonna go slow, just to see, so you kinda just tip it on there, right? And then, just like that, nothing to it. Cheers, see you in the next one. Huge thank you to everyone who placed an order for the hatchets. This is June's orders going out. 1912 Blackhawk Hatchet, this is number 55 here.